Thank you very much. I would uh, also thank the organizer for this kind invitation and, of course, the possibility to, to discuss some uh, results of our joint expedition of the Georgian University in Tbilisi and University of Innsbruck in Austria. And I would like, uh, of course, to thank also my colleagues, Sandra and Wachtang, that they gave uh, me the possibility to present our common results. So, the site of Hovlegora is located, as Elena already said, in the Shida Kartli. It's uh, along the northern offshore of the Trialeti Range in the Kura Valley, and about 50 kilometers northwest of Tbilisi in the Shida Kartli district. The settled area of Hovlegora encompasses five distinctive elevations. These are the Hovlegora proper, as the main hill in the, in the middle, with, uh, together with the northern terrace, or let's say northern settlement area, and the southern settlement area. And uh, also in the east, this is called ridge structure, which is delimited by these two gullies, which also enclose these three mounds to the northeast, called Roman 1, 2, and 3. The archaeological area extends, moreover, also with the fluvial terraces of the small Khvechmela River uh, to the east and south of the main hill, where in the 50s, so in the time of the old expedition, 15 late bronze and early Iron Age graves uh, have been excavated. Unfortunately, they are unpublished, and as far as I know, the material is more or less uh, lost. However, new graves continue to be found by the farmers when they are working on their fields. So it, this area represents at least a highly promising um, research goal for future investigations. Northworthy is also to remind the so-called Bedeni time Kurgan, excavated by the late Guram Grigolia, whom we would like to commemorate with our deepest gratitude for his support in resuming archaeological excavations in Hovlegova. Uh, also a very uh, pity situation, the exact location of this burial is unknown and will remain as such. Uh, a remarkable result from the geomagnetic survey, which has been conducted in 2013, is that the areas in between of the main topographic features are largely empty. This situation can only partially be, partially be ascribed to the intensive soil melioration that has been undertaken in Soviet times. Rather, it points to the existence of scattered farmsteads around the Hovlegora, which as the radiocarbon data we will discuss in this paper, suggest formed very close to the founding of the main settlement called Hovlegora period two, dated to the ninth century BC, and which experienced a notable extension in the sixth, fifth century BC, with the colored, uh, with the marked, with the green colored circle, Hovle period one. The site of Hovlegora was systematically, and this means unfortunately almost completely, excavated by Berzenishvili and Skitishvili from 59 to 61. And as it is well known, the excavation of the main hill uh, revealed a settlement sequence of eight levels. The sequence was further divided into two main periods, Hovlegora one and two, based on the ceramic material. The older period, uh, Roman two, embraces level eight to four and is characterized by pottery with black and gray burnished wares altogether made on the fast potter's wheel. Uh, the settlement layers Roman two to one belong to the period Hovle one and are instead characterized by the appearance of new vessel shapes made of a red burnished ware, which consist in particular of carinated bowls, but also of large storage vessels. The new so-called red pottery did not, however, replace, but rather enrich the previous assemblage. This is why uh, Musolishvili dated to the 6th, 5th century, based on historical, uh, well, let's say, with comparison with the Urartian influence. But this is another topic. The seminal work of Musolishvili about the archaeological material of Hovle settlement, published in 1978, 
represents the first attempt for a detailed periodization of late bronze and early iron age pottery in eastern Georgia, based on a stratified settlement assemblage. And this is still one of the most comprehensive publications uh, in, in this regard. Based on comparisons from the burial grounds of Santavo and Beshtasheni, and thereby relying on the periodization suggested by Abamishvili, Mushilishvili dates period Hovle II between the 15th and the 7th century, and period Hovle I between the 6th and 4th century BC. It has, however, to be emphasized in this regard that Mushilishvili's monography follows the results of a previous study, which he had already completed in 63. This is two years after the expedition at Hovlegora. His dating, therefore, did not take into account earlier, uh, neither the revised periodization of Obamishvili, which he presented in 78, and which included also pottery from uh, Treili and Zitelgori, nor the results from the Cahetian expedition, which were presented by Piskelauri in 73. Nevertheless, in his introduction, Musilishvili already pointed out that relying on Piskelauri's periodization would result in dating the beginning of the Hovla Goa sequence much later, namely to the second stage of Late Bronze Age, about the middle of the 13th to the 12th century BC. Still, also this upper date remains problematic. So the main goal of the re-excavation of the main hill of Hovlegora started in 2011 was the reconstruction of the situation described by Musilishvili by identifying the most distinctive architectonic and stratigraphic features in order to understand the meaning as well as the reliability of the eight-layered sequence, which forms the basis for the chronotypological development of the Hovle pottery, the Hovle pottery assemblage. Basically, the first three years, excavation were therefore some kind of field-based review of the publication of Musilishvili, and the results of this reprisal work will be the focus of this presentation. The most important remark is undoubtedly the so-called stone revetment. You can see in this um, historical picture, parts of it, which covered uh, the south slope. It is not known if it continues also all around, but in this part it was excavated, and which we could find in 2011 when the main uh, east profile was cut back two meters to the east, and we found this still uh, perfectly preserved uh, stone revetment on the surface. The um, quite impressive structure, uh, we don't know the purpose and function of this structure, and it seems that um, it was, has not some uh, fortification or let's say some um, structural meaning, because the, the slabs, once you step on, they easily detach from the bond and comes down the hill. So it's very difficult to understand what is the, the meaning of this. Important for us was that uh, Musilishvili describes this uh, stone revetment as the level three, which divided the settlement of Hovle I with the red pottery from the, let's say, black pottery horizon of Hovle Goa period two. So it was quite easy for us to understand which are the periods and levels uh, which we have to investigate for to understand the, the chronology of the Hovle period two. In 2012, we noticed that this revetment continue also on top of the, of, the, of the hill, where it formed some kind of paving. And associated to this paving, we find some remains of structures. And in this picture, not visible, but in the next one. So we have also here some remains of uh, settlements, but very, very scanty remains, because uh, as you can see, this, this uh, line here represents the old trench excavation. So we excavated just what uh, remained untouched. And this is uh, unfortunately very few uh, evidences. However, the pottery from this small sondage confirmed the, the, the development and the appearance of red pottery in the, in the horizon above level three, while beneath this level, we have just the black and gray burnished pottery. Most interesting was the evidence of the Hovle II. So we found uh, also the 
the settlement horizon, which Musrilishvili describes as level six. This is the, the, the big uh, burnt horizon, which puts uh, a first end to the settlement on top. And we found this, um, this horizon immediately beneath level three. It was a little bit disturbed, but I think this is uh, for sure the level six, because associated to this level, we have uh, the, the first so-called uh, typical Hovle houses, or let's say remains of it. And uh, what was uh, above all, most and most important, was the evidence of a third phase, which is not described by Musrilishvili, but was later on uh, published, let's say in few words, by Lord Kipanitz in 1991, when he spoke about the Potter uh, workshop, which existed on Hovlegora and which encompassed uh, about 50 large pottery kilns. And, um, but he don't give more detail on it. And I think this remains, which we found here below this house, uh, represents such um, remain of this pottery kiln, which is uh, per se a quite peculiar finding. I was speaking about this pottery kiln, which um, in short uh, reveals the presence of a, a later period on Hovlegora. Uh, you heard about my, my detail about Lotki Panitze speaks about the presence of a pottery workshop. Thank you. And for Although the stratigraphic situation is very complex, it is clear that this part here belongs to the oven. It was cut by the construction of this house remain. And so for sure, we have an older phase before the settlement of Hovlegora. And this was in that sense very important for us to understand why we have in all layers very, very old radiocarbon uh, charcoal samples dating to the late Bronze Age and never in the context. So we took from the, from the remains of this pottery kiln three radiocarbon samples, one from the vent hole, one from the chariot wood of the upper construction, and one is a bone from the filling, from the ash of this ch combustion chamber. And all of these show us uh, nearly the same dating evidence, I would put around the 10th, 9th century, while the radiocarbon data, excuse me, from the oven, one is taken from inside, from the ash of inside the oven, and one is taken from the mud, which was put on the outside of the oven. We have here um, two nearly complete identical dates, about 800 BC. So if we take this as evidence, we have a clear break around 800 BC between the period three um, horizon, marked by this pottery workshop, and then the first houses of the Hovle Gora period two, dated to the seventh or ninth century, as I will show in the in the in the following slides, because of course it's difficult to understand if this is the level six, seven, or eight. So we have a little bit um, time uh, open to discuss for this. The next step was to understand the, the development of the settlement, which is described to have been expanded in the level five. This means in the 12th, 11th century uh, by the construction of a fortification, or let's say by a construction of a so-called fence, which was built of a stone substructure and maybe of a wooden fence on, on top of it, which was uh, added storage rooms and this is uh, um, described by Musilishvili as a level five construction, which was de destroyed in level four and put to an end to, to this Hovle period two um, settlement in, 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 in Hovlegora. In 2011, we were again um, happy to find at least part of the inner uh, wall of this uh, uh, structure, and we could correlate the both destruction horizons. So the destruction of level four, which is mainly defined by these structures on the, on the slew, uh, foot of the slope, and the destruction on top of the hill, defined as level six, uh, belong to one and the same uh, destruction event. This means that we have to make some corrections in the, in the um, typological sequence of Musilishvili, that part of the Hovle five and four 
uh, more precisely, which have been founded in the in the so-called settlement areas to the north and to the south, are contemporaneous with the settlement on top, while the levels four and five, which were found as defined by buildings on top of the buildings of level six, they continue to be correct uh, younger developments of this settlement on top. This was a very important um, uh, correction. I will speak a little bit later in regard to the pottery. Uh, we opened a trench in this part, which uh, showed more interesting for it to be reanalyzed, uh, re and we're again happy to find at least a few part of untouched strata in, in the east sector. And um, we also noticed that we have here two phases. And already Mushilishvili speaks about two phases. So the older one would be the level five wall and this new repair of level three. So it's a um, um, Goa period one, let's say sixth, fifth century. And um, we were, as I said, lucky to find at least some in situ structures and to collect some radiocarbon data. The blue one comes from the east sector and um, are stratigraphically arranged. So this is from the uh, building horizon of this structure. It again fits with the date on top. And this comes from the occupation, which we find some remains of mud brick structure on this level, which is associated to the older level. And again, we have this uh, ninth, seventh century occupation um, duration for this period. While the upper or younger the fortification wall is associated to these remains of um, oven, where we find also this very typical, um, I would say, acheminate uh, bowls. And we took also from this part, one from the oven, and one from the le level associated to this pottery, these two radiocarbon samples, which, as we know from uh, because of the uh, Hallstatt Plateau are not so very precise, but because of the pottery, I think we can put this level uh, for sure in the 5th century BC. So we also here have the confirmation of the periodization by Muschilishvili, with the exception that we have to redate it, at least the older part, to this uh, 9th, 8th century, 9th, 7th century BC. The next step, so we handled from one point to the other, was to prove the date of the so-called terraced hill, as the Muschelishvili told us that the settlement was founded on a artificially terraced hill. And also in this case, we were happy to find at least part of this uh, big terracement. And we took also here below the, the terrace, we found some traces of old cultural uh, horizon. And again, we have this date, which confirms that the constructions date after 900 BC, let's say like this. Then we found this other Markant structure on top, which is again called by Musulishvili the so-called upper fence. And we found also here some remains. And again, I, I just shortly the, the main important results. Um, unexpectedly, we have the, the, this sample, which is younger, was found below the foundation of this fence. So again, we have, a, 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 let's say, a, a datum postquem for the construction of this, while the layers lying on the terrace wall uh, dates to a period earlier than the foundation. So we are probably mixed. So if we take the whole um, radiocarbon sequence, which we took from the levels from the Hovlegova sequence, they are now arranged from, by their stratigraphic order. Then we see we have from the pottery kiln from level three, this date about uh, the 11th, 12th century, it goes until the 9th century. So it can be assumed that uh, this uh, workshop continued let's say the whole low, late Bronze Age till to the early Iron Age, and was then destructed intentionally during the construction of the settlement on the hill. And this would explain why we have this um, contamination in the, in the following settlement uh, layers in the, in the slope, which all originate from this demolishing. And the like, the, the layers above the, the 
markers which are defined by the oven and the structures of the foundation of the of the fence from the lower fence we see again this contamination of this last phase of the pottery kiln use of the of the hill so basically the hovlegora period 2 which is the the most important from the from the perspective of the pottery which we we know thanks to the publication of Musilishvili is a pottery which dates around 800 BC and uh, this is the assemblage of the most characteristic uh, pots which we have and this would also explain because or why we have some uh, specimen like this pottery with this very uh, characteristic um, triangular impressions or like this with these triangular motifs, which for sure are from a late Bronze Age context, why these were found in the settlement sequence. They are probably also secondary mixed, which belongs to the Hovle tree period. The last five years, we moved from the main hill to, to, the, to the area, let's say, which was not so deeply touched by the old excavations. This is Mount Tree, where we reopened uh, a, a untouched part of this structure, which as you can see from the radiocarbon data is uh, not so interesting for the purpose of this topic. It's too young, let's say like this. And uh, because of the finding of this uh, iron knife, uh, I would suggest a date after 600 BC. So it's not so interesting now for the topic of the Santavro culture. But what is maybe uh, worthwhile is to note that the architecture of this structure completely uh, makes a break. So we have um, houses built with sun-dried mud bricks of the same, of a quite um, square, regular square measurement of 33 per 33 centimeters, built on uh, partially sunken uh, um, stone walls, dry stone walls, so which completely differs from the architecture we find in the, in the, on the ridge, where we could find um, at least three uh, pit houses, which were sunken in the geological soil, and whose walls are then faced with this stone architecture built with mud mortar, which also is uh, quite strange, as uh, it's... Um, shows there is another kind of architecture in the older period, period two. Just briefly, the radiocarbon samples which are enlisted here all um, originate from the three levels, occupation levels, which can be associated to these houses. I don't go too much into detail as it's easily um, understandable that we are speaking about a house which was used more or less about 800 BC plus minus 50 years. And it confirms the, the contemporaneity of this uh, pit house assemblage with the foundation on top of the Hovlegora wow. hill, and that this uh, pottery assemblage dates more or less to the 8th century. What is interesting is the, to, to define the end of this settlement, which we put around 700 BC, because of the finding of this to um, arrowheads, which dates to, uh, towards the end of the 8th and beginning of first half of the 7th century. And what is most interesting is that in this upper layer, we have the appearance of this kind of uh, brown burnish pottery with these Kanelur designs, which were noticed also by Muscheli in the level 4 sequence of the Hovlegora, and which could maybe be a sign for a younger development within the Hovlegora settlement sequence. These are the, the pots which were found, on the other hand, in the, in the settlement, in these uh, pit houses, which uh, more or less um, repeat the same shapes we have already found on top of the hill. And so um, we can say this is a, a typical assemblage of the 9th to 6th, the 7th century in the early Iron Age settlement. So the main results and also the basis for further discussions is that the pottery assemblage of Hollegora is absolutely only, only early Iron Age in character and can therefore no longer be considered for discussions about late Bronze Age pottery development. This is for sure. 
The second is that Havlegora represents a main reference point for pottery development between the 9th and 7th sec- uh, century, with a main focus on uh, 800 BC. And one of the maybe also very important result is that the development, which were ascendant by Muscherishvili, uh, remains valid and offers a valuable starting point for further detailed chronological studies on this period of the so-called early Iron Age, or as I saw yesterday, Francesco Bianchi speaking of uh, Iron Roman II period in Aradetis. Thank you very much.